Hi everybody and welcome to this tutorial on Revit 2024 Analytical Modelling. In this tutorial we're going to have a look at how to create an independent analytical model prior to the creation of a physical model. So since Revit 2023 we've been able to actually generate an analytical model independently of a physical model. This gives us much more flexibility when creating structural members and also allows the engineers and technicians to actually have ownership over their own models. So let's begin by looking at the analytical modeling tools and how we can use those to build up a simple frame. So at the minute, you can see I've got a very simple grid and currently you'll notice that in the project browser, I'm looking at level two analytical. You'll notice that I've already got an analytical member modeled. If I select this, looking at the properties palette, you can see that we have a structural material, we have a structural role and a section type. So I'm going to change this. I'm actually going to do a steel frame here. So we'll do a search for 355 uh, grade steel. Uh, we'll go ahead and select that. Click OK. And we can now see that we're using that correct grade of steel. You'll also notice that we can set a structural role. Currently, this is set to a column. But you can see here, we've also got beam, member, and primary as well. We can also set section shapes. So it's my intention here to actually go ahead and use a universal column section. So I'm going to go and load one of those into the project. To do this, I'll use the cloud library. So I'll select insert, and then I'll use load Autodesk family. So in here, we'll perform a search. So we'll just type in the word universal. So here, I'll select British standard underneath the structural columns. And we can now see we have the universal column section, and we'll go ahead and load. Of course, this is driven from a catalogue, so I'll just select a couple of column sections that I think I might want to use within the project. And we'll then click OK to load those in. Now that they're loaded, I can select the column again, and now I can apply an actual section shape to this if I want to. So here, we'll go down and select one of those universal column sections. So now that we have that analytical column configured, we'll go ahead and now distribute this across the grid. So I'm just going to use simple CAD tools here. So we'll use the copy command and we'll now start to copy this around all of the other grid locations. Of course, while I'm doing this, I could also open up a 3D model. We'll do that in a minute and we'll then tile our views. OK, so we can now see we have all of those columns placed out. Let's open up the 3D model and we can now see we have that analytical model created. We'd also tile the view by typing in WT. So now you can see that we have the 3D view on the left and here I have the level two plane looking down directly on top of the model. Let's now generate some beams. So to do this, again, on the analyze ribbon, you can see here that we have our various different tools again. So this time we're going to use member. Now by selecting member, you can see that if we look at the context panel here, we have a top point definition. So that's how we created that initial column here. But this time, because we're drawing beams, we're going to use the start end point definition tools. Notice that if we now look at the draw panel, we have a linear line, but also we can draw curved members as well. Again, if we look at our structural materials, we can go ahead and set a material. So once again, I'll type in 355 for this and we'll select that same grade of steel. The structural role in this example is going to be set to a beam. Again, we can set our section type. So here we'll use one of our universal beams that we've already got loaded in. And again, you can see that we can set cross section rotation and so on if we want to. Now looking on the options bar, you can see that chain is already configured. And if we want to, we could actually work in 3D space as well with 3D snapping on. So I could now just use the 3D view in here to actually start to create my analytical model. This isn't too dissimilar from other tools that we might have used in the past, such as Robot or Tecla Structural Designer. So what I'll do now is I'll take the 3D snapping off and I'll complete the frame actually in the 2D view. So you can see here it gives us this nice flexibility to be able to work across all these different types of views. Also here, I'll take chain off as well, so we actually can just stop drawing after each member. So that makes... A little, makes it a little bit easier, if you like, to actually model all of these various different sections. Okay, so we'll just get all of these modelled in over here. 
and we've got one more to put in over here. So actually what we'll do now, I think I'll actually delete some of these columns on the back. Okay, and we'll also delete the framing up here. And what we'll do is we'll actually use a wall to support this back end of the structure. Now to do this, we're going to use a panel. And you can see here that we've got a couple of options when defining analytical panels. If we do panel by boundary, this is normally used for a plan representation of something like a floor. If we use panel by extrusion, this can be used to represent things such as walls. However, because we've now got this generic term panel, we can use it to represent all different types of structural elements. Some examples I can think of will be things like ramps and stairs. So here, I'm going to use panel by extrusion. If we take a look into our context panel, we can see that we have a draw panel over here. So notice that we can also draw curved elements as well. So we're not just um, limited to linear elements here. And if we look at the properties palette, we can see that we can set a structural material. So mine's concrete now. I've already got the structural role actually selected to wall over here, which is quite useful. And we can then put in a panel thickness. Okay, so we're now actually ready to model our wall. Now we've just got to be mindful that the actual height of the wall is actually set in here. So currently I've got 3,600 and I'm on the level two plan in here. And now I should better actually model a long wall all the way along the back end of the structure. And you can now see I have that wall created. Whilst we're here, we'd also create a floor slab as well. So we'll go into the panel tool again over here. And this time, this is going to be created using panel by boundary. So once again, we can look in our properties palette and you can see now this indeed is set to a floor and I currently got a thickness of 200 millimeters. That's absolutely fine. And then we can actually use our standard sketching tools in here to be able to actually model our floor. Yep, so again here, I can just trace off the model like so to create that panel. Okay, so you can now see we have that analytical model defined. Now, just a couple of points about the visibility in the 3D model. What I'm going to do now is go into visibility graphic overrides. And in here, if I select my analytical model categories tab, we can see that we can switch on analytical modes as we used to better to do before. But looking at the analytical members, we can now see that we can actually see a cross section as well. So if I apply that, we can now see the nodes being displayed in the model. And equally here, we can see that we have nice cross sections representing each of the columns and beams. Moving on from that, you can actually see that the coloration of the panels is the same. So what I'm going to now do is set up a filter so I can actually color up the walls and the floors slightly different. So I'll go into visibility graphic overrides once again. I'll select the filter tab. You can already see here that I already have some filters set up. So you can see that my columns in this case are showing in this cyan color and my beams are showing in orange. So what we'll now do is we'll go to edit a new and in here I can actually now duplicate one of these filters. I'll then rename it. So this is now going to be analytical floor, for example. It will still be now an analytical panel, not an analytical member. And now we can actually filter it by its structural role. So in this case here, we're going to set that to floor and we'll then add that in. And here, of course, we're not just going to override the line work in here. We need to actually override the pattern of the projection as well. So here we'll go for a solid fill and let's actually have the floors showing in green. Okay, so if we hit apply there, we can now see that that's updated. And of course, I can go and change the line around the edge as well. So we'll make that green also in there and then hit apply. Okay, we'll do a very similar thing for our walls. So we'll go back to edit a new again. We'll select the analytical floor. We'll duplicate that and we'll rename it. So this one's going to be wall. We'll select OK. And here again, it's still an analytical panel, but this time the structural role will equal wall. Okay, once again, we can add that in. And then in here, we can set up our color that we want to use for the walls. So in this case here, I think I'm going to set my walls uh, to actually use, let's use a red color in there. Okay, and again, we can actually set up our pattern and our color for that pattern. 
Okay, so you can now see we have all of those filters set. And of course, it makes it much, much easier to actually understand what we're looking at within the model. Now, finally, what we'll do is we'll add in some boundary conditions and then a structural load on the model. So to support the columns and the wall, we'll select our boundary condition tool. And you can see here we have a point boundary condition. Notice on the options bar, we can actually set our state, whether it's going to be fixed or pinned and so on. So I'm going to actually use uh, fixed conditions along here. So we'll place all of these in underneath each of the columns. OK, and that's done. What we now want to do is fix the wall as well. But this time it's going to be using a line. And again, it will be fixed. OK, so zooming in here, we can now see the yellow cube, which is representing that fixed state. Finally, we can go ahead and add some loading in. So I'll select my loads command over here. Now in Revit 2024, you can see that the actual manual loads, i.e. the ones that aren't associated to things like faces and elements, have been removed from the software. So this has had a bit of an overhaul. You can see here that all of these loads are now always associated to the member. This is obviously a, a lot better because it means that everything will parametrically update if the model changes. So in this case, I'm going to just uh, put a load on the floor slab. You can see here we can just say on host or we can define a boundary if it, you know, if we wanted to have different loading in each of the panels over here. So in this case, I'm just going to put this on the whole panel. We can then see in the properties padlet that we can actually set our load type. So this will be a live load. I'm going to orientate it to the project. And here I'm just going to use a load of three kilonewtons. OK, we can then select the panel and we'll then see our load is created. OK, now you can see that all of this has actually happened before any physical members have been defined. Now, of course, this is great for the engineering team because we can get involved in Revit much, much earlier on in the project. And of course, now I could link that out to robot structural analysis to do the calculations or any other analytical tools that I might want to use.